What's up everybody? Uh, happy early 4th of July, it's July 3rd. Uh, in this video, you're gonna see a speech by Dr. Rebecca Heiss from the GVL Hustle meetup that we had this past Sunday. So I wanna take one second and say the GVL Hustle event, the meetup was absolutely incredible. And it was so cool to see it all come together. This was an idea that uh, Ryan Alford had uh, months and months ago. Um, our relationship uh, has grown tremendously over the last uh, few months and we got together on this idea and said, hey, let's make this come to fruition and make, let's make this as impactful as we possibly can. Uh, he's done incredible work uh, with Radical Company and putting this thing together and his experience, his background is absolutely ridiculous. But it's been cool to get this done uh, with a friend, but then see it to come fruition like it did Sunday night, like it was, a, it was pouring out rain. It was a holiday weekend before July 4th and over 75 people showed up. Uh, so I'm extremely thrilled about that. Back to the actual speech that you're gonna see in this episode, Dr. Heiss, I respect her tremendously. She travels all over the country, from her TEDx to the Vistage circuit to all over corporations, events. She gets paid like 10 to 15 grand just to speak on stage and she graced us with her presence at the GVL Hustle Meetup. It was super insightful. I know you're gonna get a lot out of it. I got a ton from it and every single person that left there was able to leave with real, real value and some things that they can go and implement this week and actually have it make a difference in their lives. So I know you're gonna enjoy this as much as I did. Dr. Heiss is absolutely incredible. Make sure that you look out for her on social media. She's got a book that's gonna be coming out this year that's gonna absolutely blow you away. So with that, enjoy this episode, enjoy this speech, and enjoy the 4th of July coming up tomorrow. So thank you guys for coming out. This is great. I uh, was listening to Tyler earlier saying that, you know, he's no Tony Robbins, but I will tell you, Tony Robbins called me earlier this week and I was like, I'm busy. <laughs> I got a gig with these guys. All right, so um, I actually just got out of an incredible adventure. I was in this Grand Canyon rafting down the river for eight days and it was phenomenal for seven of them. <laughs> day four was a little rough. Day four was what we called Rapids Day. And that sounds really fun, right? Like, you know, for seven of the days, we're just kind of drifting along and I'm not really working that hard. Occasionally get a splash of water. I'm like, ooh, this is great. And then day four, the night before, our guides sit us down and they have a little chat with us. And they say this, you're going to be in 30 mile an hour currents you're going to have 20 foot standing waves. And all of the rapids that you will face tomorrow are named after people that drowned in them. The mood changed a bit. So we're all walking away from this gathering and I'm, I'm walking away with my friend Artie. And another friend comes up and he claps us both of them back and he says, how you guys feeling? And we both smiled and gave some, I don't know, ridiculous BS answer. Like, yeah, great, it's, it's all good. And as I left from my individual campsite that night and split off from Artie, I heard him mutter underneath his breath. And he said, we're all liars today. I thought that was very poignant. So we survived, I wanna let you know. We all, there was a torn bicep and a couple other issues, but we all made it through. And actually it was a fairly inspirational moment. Artie came back, this is Artie Isaac, uh, looking a lot better than he did after Rapid Day. But he came back and he wrote a poem inspired by that moment called We Are All Liars Today. And bear with me, I hate it when people do this and read, but I'm gonna do it. We're all liars today. We only just met. Why would I lie to you? I lied to my beloved, lest she see me as weak. I lied to my children, lest they see me as unwise. I lie to my friends, lest they see me as uncaring. I lie to my dog, lest he see me as distracted. I lie in the mirror, lest I see myself as mortal. Why would I lie to you? We've only just met. I love this poem for so many reasons. But one of the things that I think it speaks to most, at least for this evening, is this question. Deceptively simple one. Who are you? Who are you? Why are you here? Why are you lying to everybody who knows you, everybody who loves you? Why do you lie to yourself? And if you're doing that, how do you even know who you are? It's all lies. And that's actually a really accurate statement. So I study the brain, it's kind of a fun thing. Uh, 
And the brain really is kind of like this. We think that we're really sophisticated savants, right, of the animal world. Us humans, we have all these complex behaviors, and, and we really think about things consciously. And I'm here to tell you, no, you don't. No, you know, you are actually a puppet of your subconscious. Sorry. Your behaviors are really driven by your subconscious mind. And so when I tell people this, they have one or two reactions. They, they giggle a little, they're like, oh, yeah, all right, okay. But I decided to come here tonight. No, you didn't. Your subconscious decided that. And then it let you in on the secret that, hey, consciously, you're going to think that you decided to come here tonight. You're about 99.9% .9 of the time operating from your subconscious. We'll talk about that in a second. But for now, I want to demonstrate this to you, if you would. You all have these in your seat. Looks a little funky. I'm not going to make you read and bookmark anything. But if you would, do me a favor. Take this out. Take a look at the black side. Cover your left eye or just close your left eye. And train your right eye onto this plus sign. You're going to hold this bookmark, as it were, sort of towards the center of your face and slowly move it back, keeping your right eye focused on that plus sign. Something's going to happen when you see that something happen. Let me know. Oh, come on. It disappears. Thank you. Whew. Got really nervous there. I've done this a million times. You've got to be able to see this. You should see that the circle disappears, right? If you don't, keep practicing. You can take these with you. It's my gift to you. OK, you should see that the circle disappears. This is pretty cool. This is a little trick of your brain, OK? Your left eye sends information to the right part of your brain. Your right eye sends information to the left part of your brain, where those wires cross in the middle is a blind spot. Pretty cool. You don't care. Good. Flip it over. Do the exact same thing on the pattern side. Tell me what happens. Don't give up. I see people already like, keep trying. What happens? Disappears. Disappears. Oh, really? It goes black? So it blends, right? It, I just told you you couldn't see anything. So it should go black, but it doesn't. What happens? It fills in all the little colors and dots. That's cool. That's your subconscious brain producing a pattern that doesn't actually exist. You're seeing something that's not there. We kind of tend to trust our visual senses to like give us accurate information about what's going on in the world. <coughs> And yet your subconscious is just producing things for you. Hmm. How often do you think it's doing that? Because I promise you, it's not just in your visual cortex. Your subconscious fills in information all the time because we're operating in an environment where we're getting hit by about 400 billion bits of information every single second. It's a lot to process. And your brain sucks at it, frankly. It passes all that information to the subconscious. So you're only actually conscious of about 2,000 bits per second, which means that 99.9999999% of the time, so let me do the math and check me real quick, you're operating from your subconscious. So what is your subconscious? What are the behaviors? What are the attitudes? What are the things that have been programmed into your subconscious? I'm a biologist. I look at genes. It doesn't look like a gene, sorry. I look at genes. I look at the genetics and I say, OK, all right, you're you because of the DNA that you have in you, partially. But if I change just two of those genes, just two of them, I can create you in a manner where you'll be 13 times more likely to commit a violent crime. And if you have those two genes, you could end up on death row shared with 98.1% of death row inmates. They share these two genes. Now, I'm not saying that if I give you those genes, you have no free will and you absolutely will murder somebody. What I'm saying is subconsciously, you probably will if you don't consciously override those behaviors. So you operate in this 98% um, that's not sharing those genes. That's, that's good. Glad to be in the room with you. I'm a stress physiologist. I studied hormones for a long time. So I like injecting people with hormones. Don't run. But if I created a particular cocktail and injected it into you, 
that could turn you into a pedophile. Hmm. Now, subconsciously, of course. Consciously, I'm sure you would override that with the 0.00001% of the brain that you're actually processing conscious information with. So are you actually you? Well, oh, shoot, went ahead. Are you actually you? And you'd say, no, 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 look, I'm more than my genetics, I'm more than my hormonal profile. Good, I hope you are. So let me feed you some fermented food, because I can change your personality with that. Eat some fermented food. You'll become more of an extrovert. I'm not joking, science. And in fact, you're not even you at a cellular level. You're three times more bacteria than you are human. You're a walking Petri dish. Literally, there's lots of bacteria on you, not much human. So what makes you you? What drives those behaviors? And again, ugh, it's your subconscious programming. What is your particular subconscious programming? I think we kind of live in the matrix. All of our brains have been set to survive mode. We're set on survival. That's, what, that's the programming that we all share, that we start from. How do you break out of survival mode? How many of you have a flip phone on you right now? Really, none of you? <laughs> so disappointing. Why? Because we're not a drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should have expected that. <laughs> Why? Hopefully because you like are going on oh, that super old technology. And I have the iPhone X. You'd probably be really embarrassed if you have like the iPhone 4 right now. Right? Like, oh, this old technology. It's like five years old. And yet you're walking around with a brain that is about 100,000 years old. Because that's the programs that you're operating from. Your ancestral brain is living in a modern environment. You're stuck in this survival mode. It's why sugars and fats taste so good. Because our ancestors couldn't get enough of them. They were helpful and useful in that environment. Not so much today. Ever try and break that habit? We're going to talk about that in a second. Here's how you're set up. Your brain operates on two very simple principles. Move towards things that feel good. Move away things that feel bad. I know, many years in the educational system for this. This is what brain science comes down to. You guys don't put your hand on a hot stove, why not? It hurts. I move away from pain. I move away from discomfort. This is your subconscious programming, and sometimes it's useful. I don't want to burn myself. Okay, that's good. How about quitting sugar? Sugar is what? It makes you feel good. It gives you a nice dopamine hit. Tyler, how does it feel to quit sugar? It's, it's awful. Man, I've done it a couple times. I keep going back. The first day you quit sugar, your body says, I'm going to die. Like this, you need to feed me. You need to feed me some carbs right now. Because your own body will lie to you. Your own body will say, this doesn't feel good. I need, I need something. I need something that I'm not getting. And you have to consciously override that programming. Now, you can do it, but is it easy? It's awful. Because every cell in you is screaming no. It's like the last you know, set in the, in the gym. And you're like, ah, it's so easy to walk away from that, because that's discomfort. And my brains are programmed to avoid that set. Think about who you're programmed to hang around. What does your community look like? Have you ever even thought about this consciously before? Who do you hang out with? You hang out with probably the people that you met in high school, or you bump into because they're in your regular community, or it's your family, and your family always loves you. Your friends always love you. They make you feel good. They move you into that happy space. What if you intentionally chose a different community? What if you intentionally chose a community that makes you feel uncomfortable in a really good way so that you can grow? Because they're not lying to you. They're going to say, actually, you're mortal. Tough truth. Actually, you're not as good at this as 
as you think you are. Let me help you. Jim Rohn famously said, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Who do you spend time with? The people that make you feel good? That's nice. It's like a good uh, rest day between a workout. You need them. But do you grow? I'm very lucky in that I count Tyler as one of my five. Now here's the unique thing. I don't see Tyler that much. I'm on the road all the time. He's on the road all the time. But our subconscious brain is going to say, well, you can't be friends then. You can't have this tight-knit community. Yeah, sure you can. There's the internet. I don't know if you've ever heard of it before. <laughs> kind of a thing where you can connect with incredible individuals that will help you build and change and grow and be transparent and authentic and create a you that you want to be, not just a subconscious underlining program that everybody else shares. That's what this is about. You have the opportunity to upgrade your programming. Get out of that flip phone mode. You're better than a subconscious program. We all are conscious individuals. It just takes some work to get there. And you have to be willing to go through that work, that discomfort, that moving away from pleasurable things sometimes. So this is your moment. Red pill, blue pill, right? Moving out of that matrix. What are you going to choose? Are you going to choose people that'll say, you, you are weak. You are unwise. You're uncaring. You're distracted. Actually, you're, you're mortal. Do you want the truth? Or do you want to remain comfortable? And that's ultimately the decision that you need to make. Are you willing to remain in that subconscious space? Or do you want to choose to be in that 0. 0.00001 percentile who's conscious, who's challenged? I hope that you choose to push yourself, to get into that space of discomfort. This is an amazing opportunity to do just that. So Green Bell Hustle gives you an opportunity to write your own story. There's a lot of stories out there. I mean, look around. How many people are here? You all have a unique individual story. But most of us are writing that story from the subconscious place. Those are pretty boring stories. You have the opportunity to change that, to write your own better conscious story, one that I and you and Tyler and Ryan and everybody would want to read. Choice is yours. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.